Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you a very quick, simple, and easy to use method that you can use to create closed procedure exercises, which are ideal for use in schools, colleges, and for teaching and practicing rehearsing. Closed procedure, as we have here, is a document where there are certain words that are missing, and students have to identify what the correct word is by clicking and choosing from a drop down list. So each word that is missing and is highlighted in red, we simply click, look down, choose which one of those words is correct, and then when we finished it, we have a document with the words in red highlighted that the teacher can then look at quickly and mark to see whether it's correct or not. So very simple, drop down, choice of words, using a closed procedure exercise. Let's see how we can make this happen. So creating closed procedure documents in Microsoft Word is fairly straightforward to do. Um, as you can see in this example, I've got some text written out and there are some words which are missing and those are highlighted using these red question marks. If I click on any one of those words, what I get as a student is a drop down list of possible words which could fit into that particular um, slot. So if I choose text here, uh, so when Microsoft Word or using Microsoft Word, the text cursor shows you where the next text will appear. Uh, here we can use left something or right alignment. So I go down here and choose center. And you can also something justify it. So we go down there and we choose fully. If we choose the wrong word, then obviously it doesn't uh, tell us, there's no immediate feedback here, but the words that we have chosen are highlighted in red, so that then when we either print this off or uh, we email it to the teacher for marking, uh, the teacher can easily see which of the words which have been uh, changed by the student or chosen by them. So let's see how easy this is to do. Um, the first thing that you'll need to do is to make sure you have the developer tab at the top in your ribbon. Now by default you probably won't have that there. It's one that you have to choose to add. So let me show you first of all how to get the developer tab. Very easy. Uh, once you've got it then you can do all sorts of amazing things in Word um, including creating a closed procedure exercise. Now there are two ways in which we can get the developer tab. Uh, the first and simplest way is to find a blank area somewhere on the ribbon, so anywhere where there's a, a bit of plain gray and you're not clicking on a button. Just simply right click and to go down to customize the ribbon. Then when you get this uh, panel here on the right hand side, these are all of the tabs which could be uh, included in your ribbon. Uh, you'll see a developer here has a tick in it, uh, but yours may well not have a tick to begin with, uh, which is why it's missing. So to add the developer tab in, you simply tick there next to the word developer and click OK. The other way is to go up to File and down to Options, and then when you get this panel, again you click on Customize Ribbon. And uh, there we are again with this list of tabs. So you just simply make sure that developer is ticked. Now once developer is ticked, let's uh, select that tab. Uh, what we need to do is choose which word we're going to remove or hide and provide the student with alternatives. So let's choose the word font here. So the text style is known as the font style. That's what we want. We want the student to be able to identify the word font but we're going to hide that word. So first step is to just uh, highlight the word, just double click on it to select it. And then if you come up to this section here, this is a, a little panel full of controls. You've got things like text boxes, check boxes, um, and here we've got a drop down list control. Now there's two or three buttons which look very similar. We've got a combo box here, we've got a calendar here. Um, this one in the middle is the drop down list content control. Uh, drop down list is all we need to worry about there. So click that 
and what you'll see is the word you've selected now uh, has this sort of uh, funny frame around it. Now, with that still selected, what we need to do is click on Properties up here. So we click on Properties, brings up this panel. Nothing we need to worry about here at all. Uh, all we need to do is to add the different options that we want to give the students in the order we want them to be displayed. So the word we're looking for is font, but let's just put in a couple of wrong words first of all. Uh, so let's put in the word writing, um, then we'll add another one and we'll put in um, words. Uh, now let's put in the correct word that we want, font, and let's put in one other wrong one. Um, so let's have paragraph. So we've got our four possible options uh, included in there. You'll see one at the top is uh, included by default, which says choose an item. Uh, don't worry about that. Leave that exactly as it is for the moment. That's OK. So all you've done is simply add the different options that you want um, in the order you want them to be displayed. When you've done that, simply click OK. Now, the next thing we have to do is to change to design mode. So at the moment, it's in the view which the student would see. It's still in student view. If we go into design mode, things change slightly. And you can now see these sort of large uh, blue brackets around your words. And there's a couple of things we're going to do here. Um, first of all, whatever word we've got included in these brackets here, we need to replace now with, say, our question marks. That's what I had in there. So you are now hiding the word that, uh, well, the answer, basically, you're hiding that, replacing it. You can put question marks in there. You could put um, brackets, question marks, whatever. It's just basically the dummy text that is going to be displayed to the student before they've chosen an option. So change those to the question marks. And then if you just click on this little gray button at the top left corner, that selects the whole of this um, menu block. Uh, effectively, all of the options inside that list are now selected. And we can now change the font color. So with that selected, I'm going to go up to home. And I'm just going to, simply going to change the font color to red. That's all. And that's it. We're done. Uh, we just need to go back to developer and come out of design mode. So we click on that design mode button again. Um, and there we are. So now this is what the student will see. So the student sees the text style is known as the something. And they click on the little drop down arrow next to it. Uh, and they see the various options. So maybe they think it's uh, writing. So they've chosen the word writing. Uh, maybe they think, no, 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 wait a minute, no, I'm not ready for that. If they just simply choose an item, they click that one at the top. Um, oh, I haven't changed that one, sorry, my fault. Let's just go back into that uh, again and put in our question marks and color that red. Always a good idea to test your uh, closed procedure exercise before the students uh, see it. So let's come out of design mode again. Um, so yes, if they choose, uh, cl click that top one, choose an item, then it'll just go back to the question marks. If they choose any other word, then that word appears and is selected as red, so they can see that very easily. Let's just very quickly add one more. Uh, the size of the text is measured in points. Okay, that's the correct answer. Let's select that. I'll do this quite quickly. So I select the word, click on the drop down list, and then click on properties. I'm then going to add in the word um, pixels, points, centimeters, inches, elephants, and then click OK. Uh, next, I'm going to click on the button at the top left, go to design mode. I'm going to color it red, and I'm going to change this word to a question mark. Come out of design mode. So now the text style is known as the font style, and the size of the text is measured in what? Uh, we have a number of options there. Possibly inches. No, that's not right. Is it elephants? Quite probably. But of course, the answer is points. 
So there we are. Uh, and then this document can be saved, it can be printed, it can be emailed, whatever. And the student, of course, can also include their name at the top if you uh, provide a little box for them to write their name in as well. So there we are. That's a very simple way of creating quite an effective closed procedure exercise in Microsoft Word. Um, and there's a number of different uh, tools within the developer tab. So if you haven't already uh, explored it, then uh, do please take a look at that, including the macros. Um, I've already produced quite a few videos explaining about macros, so you might want to have a little look at those. Uh, if you have any questions about this, please do leave a comment below. Uh, if you found it useful, please do consider clicking on the like button. That would be fantastic. And uh, also, of course, do consider subscribing. Lots and lots of videos coming out, which I hope will be everybody as useful as this one. So there we are. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy that. And I'll see you in the next video.